Welcome back, scholars. I'm so glad that you've come back for lesson two in our series that we're going to be doing together regarding analyzing text to determine theme. Just in case this is the first time you've joined us, I'm Sherry Blankenship and I've taught English language arts for a very long time now. This is my 27th year in education. And as I expressed in lesson one, I love what I do, and that is the opportunity to share my love of literature, my, my love of all things English language arts with students. And so I'm very excited to be here with you. And today we're going to actually move into a short story text together as we look at the steps to analyze text to determine theme. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson two. In our first one, we used a work of art to just introduce the idea of a universal topic versus a theme. I asked you at the end of lesson one to hold on to that and to continue to add to your universal topic brainstorming list. Like I said, if you're just joining us for the first time, don't worry, you're just fine. If you were with us last time, you won't need that list today. You'll need it for lesson three and forward but hold on to it. So keep all of the things we're talking about together as we do these, this series, we run through this series together. And let's dig in now to today looking at layers. And we're gonna look at layer one today. When we're moving from a universal topic to determining theme in a short story in particular, because that's what we're going to use for the rest of our series together, you wanna to start first with layer one comprehension. Sometimes we are tempted when a teacher hands us a story or we encounter a story on, all on our own. Sometimes we're tempted to just dive right in if we know we've gotta be looking for theme, then we start looking for theme from the very beginning of things. But until we know what's going on in the poem or the short story or the novel, it's really hard to move to that next level. So today, our focus is going to be on how do we know what's happening in the story, in this case, the short story, and how can I use this process every single time I have a new text so that I can make sure I get layer one before I try to do something deeper like analyzing for themes. The story that we're going to be using together is a short story called The Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin. I think you're going to like it. It's a little bit different and it's very short, but there's a lot that happens within this very compacted time frame that we see within our short story. So we're going to start with it. And I'd like for us to know, I like to know when I head out on a trip, I like to know where my end destination is before I begin. So I can kind of get my brain going in that direction all along. So where are we going with this short story? Well, in several series lessons from now, we will actually be working on this part of it together, but I wanted you to go ahead and know this is what we'll be looking for inside of this story. So after reading The Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin, write an essay in which you analyze how a theme is shown through Mrs. Mallard's response to the events in the plot. I'm sure you can guess from this that Mrs. Mallard is probably our main character and you would be right with that guess. So she is actually going to have some really challenging situations take place in a very short amount of time. And what we're going to be looking for is how does the author use those challenges and her response to those challenges to show us a theme. Well, we're not going to be doing this part today. I wanted you to just simply see where we're going on this journey. We've got a good bit to do before we get there. So if you'll see on my slide here where we are in the process, we're at the comprehension level. What happens in the story? We haven't even read the story yet. In our next lesson, we'll be looking at universal topics within this story and then determining theme. So then we can also go back and get our text evidence that helped us get to what the author's saying that, that is the theme statement you've come up with from what you see inside of the story. And then we'll put it all together in our writing. But like I said, today, our lesson today, we're only focusing in on step one, what's happening in this text. 
So let's get that kind of under our belt. Along with the video link for this particular lesson, there are a couple of links that you'll also have access to. One of them is the story itself. And I've got a screenshot on the slide right now <clears throat> of the story, but it doesn't ha have all of the orange and the yellow that's in the corners when you click on the link to the story. It actually only has the text of the story itself. So eventually I know you'll want to have that pulled up and beside you. For today, I think what I have in front of us will get us going for the story. But I wanted to point out to you that when you go to the link that is the, the short story itself, you'll notice that I have the paragraphs numbered and you'll also notice probably that you're seeing some green and some orange and then green again. We're going to be using something called chunking the text today to come up with a summary of what's happening. Remember our goal for today is what's happening in the story. So when you see that on the text, you'll know how it goes with it because you've seen it here on the slide, at least in part. So today, let's start with my first chunk of the text, which is green on this slide, and I've blown it up a little bit bigger on this slide. So my question as I read this is, what do I see happening in just this part of the story? This is paragraph one, and it should be a number two underneath that. Paragraph one and paragraph two are my first, my first chunk of the story. So I'm gonna read it. As I'm reading it, start absorbing what you see happening. Knowing that Mrs. Mallard was afflicted with heart trouble, great care was taken to break to her as gently as possible the news of her husband's death. It was her sister Josephine who told her in broken sentences, veiled hints that revealed in half concealing. Her husband's friend Richards was there too, near her. It was he who had been in the newspaper office when intelligence of the railroad disaster was received. With Brentley Mallard's name, leading the list of killed. He had only taken the time to assure himself of its truth by a second telegram and had hastened to forestall any less careful, less tender friend in bearing the sad message. So now this is how our short story begins. This is the first chunk. It's the first two paragraphs of our short story. Remember our question guiding us for this is... What's happening in this section? So looking at what's, what we have on the screen, there's a lot more of the story to come, but I want us to know what's happening here before we move any further. So the chunking of it, you have the text again on the left-hand side here on this slide, it's the exact same thing that was on the previous one. But what I want us to do now is every time we have a new chunk of the text, in order to figure out what's happening in the story, I want us to figure out what's happening in each chunk individually. And then we get one sentence, no more, no less, but in one sentence, let's summarize what's happening just in that chunk. So take just a second, I'm going to put it back on the big version of it here, and take a second to just think through, what are the key details you would have to include in what you see happening in just paragraphs one and two, if you got one sentence to summarize this section? I'll give you a few seconds to, to look and to think about what's happening, and then we'll look at a, a summary statement for this section. So if we were in the classroom face to face together, I'd probably ask you a few things to make sure you were on that right track. Things such as, what do we know is the reason why someone delivering bad news to Mrs. Mallard would need to be careful about how they did it? And I'm sure immediately in your mind, you're already answering me going, well, she seems to have a heart problem. That's probably pretty important. Of course, the news itself is also incredibly important. What news are they bringing to her? Well, that her husband has been killed in a train accident. 
that's pretty bad news, especially for someone who has a heart condition to think about delivering that. Just in this section, what's happening in this section, if I were to summarize that in one sentence, it might look something like this. Mrs. Mallard's sister and a family friend gently deliver the news that Mrs. Mallard's husband has been killed in a train accident, being careful of how they tell her because Mrs. Mallard has problems with her heart. That would be my summary sentence for chunk one. I think I got most of the things that we needed to have in there so that I would know what happened in this section. So let's move on to chunk two now. It's definitely a dramatic beginning in our short story. So let's look now, we're gonna use the exact same process in chunk two, what is happening in this section? Same question, but now what's happening only in the part we have in front of us? She did not hear the story as many women have heard the same with a paralyzed inability to accept its significance. She wept at once with sudden wild abandonment in her sister's arms. When the storm of grief had spent itself, she went away to her room alone. She would have no one follow her. So that's it for chunk two. That's actually paragraph three of this short story. It's a shorter section, but I've chosen to leave it by itself because this is a really important piece in seeing. If you remember our original prompt, I'm going to go back here, just a couple of slides, is write an essay in which you analyze how a theme is shown through Mrs. Mallard's response to what happens in the story. So we want to make sure that even as we are figuring out what's happening, we're thinking about where we see her respond. So in chunk two, what are the main things I would need to pull out? And we actually see her response to the very first part of the plot unfolding. What does she do? She weeps. She cries. That in itself, I would say, is not an unusual uh, response to news that she's just been given. And then thinking about what she does after that, I think that would be an important piece to consider in my summary sentence as well. So before I put my summary sentence up there, I want you to take a minute, look at just paragraph three, that chunk, and you get one sentence. What do you say if you had to summarize this part, what's happening in this section in one sentence? I'll give us just a minute, jot down your thoughts. So hopefully you've been able to summarize in one sentence just what's happening in chunk two. What kinds of details did you pull out from this one? Specifically about her response and then what she does. What do we see happening in this section? Well, here's my summary sentence and I want you to check it against yours to see if you see some similarities. <clears throat> So if I were summarizing in one sentence just what's happening in chunk two, I might say, Mrs. Mallard immediately begins crying in her sister's arms and then insists on going to her room to be alone. So what we're actually doing with this, this process, this strategy is I've taken the text. There are actually 20 paragraphs total in this whole short story. We've now looked at paragraphs one, and two together as a chunk, and paragraph three as a chunk. 
If I take the entire short story and I do the same kind of thinking all the way through, then I might get something like this. If you'll notice on the screen in front of you now, there is a chart and you'll see one and two, dealing with paragraphs one and two, and you'll see our sentence that we just looked at together as the summary sentence for the chunk of paragraphs one and two in the short story. And then below it, you'll see paragraph three and our summary sentence for it as well. I mentioned earlier that there's a link that you can click on if you've not already done so that are resources that go with this lesson. And one of the links is the story itself so that you can have the text in something other than in big chunks on slides in front of you like I have here. But there's another link and I've linked this document for you where I've gone through and chunked the entire thing into paragraphs and sections for you to consider for summarizing. So now we've done the first two together. I would like for you to continue doing the exact same thing, but with the rest of the short story. Remember our goal for this lesson, and I'm gonna go back just a couple of slides here. Our goal for this lesson today is comprehension. What happens in this story is super important before we put a new next layer on, which has to do with universal topics, and then determining theme, and then finding supporting evidence. We are working through a process that you can actually use with any text you encounter. This chunking and getting a summary from that chunking is a really neat technique that you can use yourself. Sometimes your teacher might assign it to you and ask you to do it just like I'm asking you to do it as we've walked through paragraphs one and two and then paragraph three and as I'm asking you to continue to think about the rest of the story and see what happens because I've already told you there's a lot that happens in a very short amount of time in this story. But our goal here is what happens in this text today. That might seem like, what does it have to do with analyzing text to determine theme? Getting that firmly under your belt is super important for where we're going next. So here's the document that I was talking about is linked. And you'll notice that some paragraphs, paragraphs four, five, and six are linked together. So you would do one sentence for paragraphs four, five, and six, one sentence for paragraph seven, eight, nine, one sentence for paragraph 10, and so on throughout the rest of the document. You're not seeing the entirety of the document here because this is just a screenshot of it. But think about it, imagine with me if you will, that you've read the rest of the paragraphs in the short story using the exact same process that we just did together. And you've put your sentences for each section, each chunk of the text into this document. When you get finished with that, think about reading from top to bottom, from paragraph one all the way through the end of the story, just reading your one sentence, one sentence that you've done for each chunk you will have a complete summary of this story and you should very easily be able to see then what happens in this text. So where we've left off so far, Mrs. Mallard's sister and a family friend gently deliver the news that her husband has been killed in a train accident, being careful of how they tell her because Mrs. Mallard has problems with her heart. Mrs. Mallard immediately begins crying in her sister's arms and then insists on going to her room to be alone. Continuing from there will give you the rest of what happens in this story. So I will give you time before we have lesson three to get the rest of what happens in this text so that we can build on top of it. Because where are we going next? This is not the first and only time that we're going to see the story of an hour. When we come back together for lesson three, <clears throat> we'll be ready to build on a layer. We did layer one today that has to do with comprehension. Layer two then will be 
where do we see universal topics inside of this? And thinking back to lesson one, even with what we've already seen with Mrs. Mallard, we know there's something to do with relationships for sure. There's definitely something to do with sadness, perhaps, with anger, perhaps. We'll see where this goes. We'll be talking about and reviewing universal topics next so that we can see what Kate Chopin has to say about the universal topics that she explores in this short story. But before we get there, you'll need to finish thinking about what happens in the story. So I can't wait to see you again. Next time when we come together, I'd like for you to think about the story as a whole, what happens inside of that story. And then also, if you have the chance to review your notes on universal topic versus theme, what the difference between those two is, and if you even want to think a little bit ahead, you could even think about what universal topics do you see now that you know what happens in the whole story because you've gone through and chunked the text to get a summary so that you have layer one comprehension under your belt and we'll add the analyzing starting next time. I really look forward to lesson three coming up and can't wait for you to, to join me again. Um, as always, remember that you can go back if you've not seen lesson one yet or you just wanna go back and watch lesson one so that you can refresh your memory about the difference between universal, theme, universal topic and theme, feel free to do so. We're gonna add on to what we know about Kate Chopin and what she's doing through this short story with Mrs. Mallard's responses when we come back together for lesson three. I can't wait to see you. See you soon.